people. We're talking about AI and cloud and printing and new biomaterials and nano and this and that. The scanner is like the gatekeeper. If you don't scan, you don't get access to any of this. When we get that material that changes the game, that what do you want in that material? Three things. Aesthetics, Aesthetic. durability, research. New Zealand dentistry is very interesting. That's completely fee for service, out of pocket. How much do you charge the patients? Ahmed, welcome to Los Angeles. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Amir. Where are you from? I am from originally Iraq, Baghdad, Iraq. I was born in 1993, and uh, that was, I was a few months old, and then we left Iraq, and uh, my parents had, you know, the classic immigration story where we moved around there in, in the Middle East trying to get out of Iraq. My mm -hmm. dad originally was in three wars, Three wars. Three wars, wow. and they were like Middle Eastern wars, so. Sure. Hard, hard wars. Um, yeah. I know the, one of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're not really good neighbors. Yes. You know yeah. one of them. We invaded you guys, sadly. No problem. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> crazy world. Yes. Um, and so, yeah, three wars later, he decided he had enough of Iraq, tried time to get out. And it's funny, a lot of people ask me, why New Zealand? Why did your dad choose New Zealand? And yeah, how, how, why the hell he... <laughs> It's so no, far. At the end of the Middle world. Middle of nowhere. At the end of the world, right. man. At the end of the world, we're so isolated. The reason is, is that uh, in wartime, I'm sure m many people can relate now, it's not easy to get a visa. Mm -hmm. When a sure, country sure. invades no another country, you. no one wants no you. No one wants you. You're like, bad. No one wants to touch you. And this is 1993. So uh, actually, New Zealand, we could get in through a skilled migrant visa, like a skilled worker visa. Oh, yeah, visa. A skilled worker. And uh, I, my dad always tells me, he tells me the story. He's like, I didn't even know where New Zealand was. He thought it was in Europe. No yeah, way. I'm not joking. Wow. And then he like went to get the airplane ticket. In 1993, there's no, you know, sky scanner or anything like that. You go to an office. Sure. And they tell him it's, you know, like 15 hours away. And he's like, where the hell am I going? <laughs> you know, so, but the rest is history, man. And, and around 93, end of 93, 94, we went to New Zealand uh, established ourselves in Wellington and, and went from there. That's beautiful. So mm. you have a brother, sister? How many? One siblings? brother. One Younger brother. or older? Older. Uh, older. Six years older. He has three kids. I, I have see. three beautiful nieces and nephews. So he, so he went there with two kids yeah. and wifey, wifey and established a new life. And yeah. And hard. like, look, man, I wish I could say I came from oil money or something. <laughs> I'd be on a yacht or something right now, but I don't... Um, yeah, no, my, my dad, it's it's that generation, you know, they're, yeah, they're just they built just different. Like if someone told me now, leave everything you have and go in the middle of a country, you don't know how to speak the language and start new, I don't think I could do it. Well, and I keep asking you to come to US, <laughs> you're like, it's too hard. <laughs> it's too hard and it's the US, yeah. imagine. And so my dad, yeah, we he left Iraq, he went to New Zealand and just, it's a bit different to the US. I didn't know this until coming here, but... You guys don't let, you don't have like a registration exam. Mm -hmm. Like if you haven't done your studies as a dentist here, you can't work here. Sure. Elsewhere, outside the US, there's registration exams. Right. But uh, they're expensive and they're in English. And, you know, like my father, when he moved to New Zealand, he spoke English, but it's like, you know. It's not like Broken, academic yeah. Yeah, English. It's Middle he East. was not a dentist, right? He was a dentist in Iraq. In Iraq. In Iraq. Okay, so so he... my mom and my dad are both dentists in, in Iraq. Iraq. They met in dental school. It's very cute. And then, uh, so they were both dentists and they moved to Wellington, New Zealand. So for the first few years, he sold everything, came to New Zealand. He just wanted a peaceful life uh, and started from scratch. And it takes a while to sit these exams, get ready, get prepared, study with a family. And so for the first few years, he was just working as a pizza delivery guy, oh supermarket God. guy. So imagine five years. five years. Yeah, going from a dentist to delivering pizzas. That takes a lot of character yeah. to go through that and knowing that something's going to happen, and it will. And the crazy thing is, is you go through setbacks. Like he sat the exam, and the first time he didn't pass it. Mm. And he tells me he remembers going, waking up to work one day to go to the uh, supermarket right. to do his shift, and he got the letter in the mail that says, like, you didn't pass. And then you have to, like, Try again. Do this. Same as mom? Same as mom. Mom was... Um, Mum was taking care of us, and mum actually passed the first time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she, uh, she, uh, That's awesome. she was taking care of the family and let dad do his thing. And yeah, so he did that, and then uh, we established ourselves in New Zealand. Um, my dad set up a practice in New Zealand, and um, his first practice is funny if I show you pictures. 
Maybe we put them in the video. How, can we pull them off? Uh, they're not on. They're they're on my phone. I'll have to like scroll and, and find. Send them. it over. And we'll will. put it in the video. You'll be like shocked. It's like classic, like early nineties clinic. You know, like. What is it? Brown. Everything? Yeah, <laughs> and like the clinic. <laughs> chair. There's no digital. Yeah, of course. This is, and also, it's not oh, like yeah. a modern practice. It's like uh, the cheapest practice <laughs> you could find. And we started from like zero. How was growing up in New Zealand? How, what's the population there? Five million. That's it. Five million. How well, was growing up? It's 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 a nice place, man. I have to say, look, I am eternally grateful to New Zealand. It's given me a lot, and it's given my family a lot. I mean, New Zealand is like a village. I like to say that it's it's like the U.S. 150 years ago. Wow. You know, like the city I grew up I I grew up in, right now has a population of I think like three three four hundred thousand or something like what that. What is it called? Wellington. Wellington. Wellington, New Zealand. It's it's like your Chicago. We have it's the windy city. What's the capital? Yeah. It's uh, Wellington. Wellington's Wellington the capital. capital. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, look, New Zealand is just really it's chill. Beautiful. Man. It's beautiful. Everyone says it's that. Chill. Chill. People say hi. People are friendly. It's not very racist. That was a kind of a benefit. Um, and no traffic. Like, I drive to work. It takes about seven minutes. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like life in the slow lane. But uh, at the same time, you know, it depends what you want from life. You know, if you like the hustle and bustle and hustlers yeah, and come entrepreneurs. Come to the U.S. Yeah. Come to the U.S. You keep telling me, come to the U.S. Exactly. So then, then did you decide to become a dentist by yourself or father influenced you? Look, I had a, my father was very chill. He was like, you can do what you want, son. But I had a very traditional Arabic mom. Okay. And so when your mom's an Arabic mother, like, uh, how do I put this? Like a Latino mother. You know, <laughs> she's like, uh, <laughs> you don't have a choice, son. Uh, no I choice. was lucky. I was lucky. I always, um, I always enjoyed the sciences. So I, I, went, I did my schooling in, univer- in, in university in New Zealand. So I did my schooling in Wellington. And then the only dental school, in all of New Zealand, we have one dental school. We don't have this, like, U- U.S. So, style sure. of schools so, everywhere. So, so. One I school. See. Competitive to get in? Yeah, so like uh, there's only 50 spots. That's it. Yeah, for the whole country per year. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So um, it's quite competitive. But that's like any dental school around the world. They're all competitive. So I did my university in in New Zealand. You do like a one-year general sciences year. One year. That's the system. There's no other. Okay. So you finish your school and you go to university. You do first year health science. One year, general sciences, chemistry, biology, Mm -hmm. that's about and that's like the it's like the Hunger Games or something. That's where they separate everyone. So after that first year, based on your grades, based on blah blah blah, you apply, and then you get accepted. Medicine, dentistry, pharmacy. So you did. I applied dentistry. for medicine and dentistry, and I pick, I picked both, and so I sorry I applied for both and I got accepted for both, and so I had to sit there and like make a life decision because I always wanted to be a doctor. You know, it's like a young guy, like a young driven guy. You're like, I want to be a heart surgeon. You don't know anything about life. Yeah, you just, you just want it. You you just, just, like the sound of the it. Sound that's it. it. <laughs> the sound of it is good, heart surgery. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I sat there thinking about it, and my mom was like, you, you think you have a choice, but you don't really have a choice. And so, so you went to that? <laughs> <laughs> what about your brother? My brother's dentist too. He Same, was, wow. Yeah, yeah, he's a dentist too. Uh, it's like a family of dentists. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree, man. I mean, you're growing up and you see what your dad's doing. And yeah, you get the influence. You get influence. You like your dad. but My dad's like a massive role model. He's like a best friend to me. We're still really close. And so it, it's like, you know, your role model's there. What's he doing? You and do you follow same. that. You follow that. The rest is history, man. It's crazy. Imagine if I picked medicine, it would be, there'd be no IDD. Well, that early practice... Hmm. I'm sure that changed. Is it yeah. still the same, essentially, location? Yeah. Things that evolve, or no? He so switched it's or funny, sold, yeah. or is it like US to sell to yeah. another dentist? Kind of like it's actually funny. Um, in Wellington, where we currently work in our current practice, mm-hmm. which is our newer practice, let's say it's been there for 20 years, but I'll get to that. Is um, it's one of the lowest socioeconomic status areas areas in all of New Zealand. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Do you guys use socioeconomic status? Not Basically, really. <laughs> like, you know, what do you guys call, like... Average, uh, uh, median and salaries, yeah, okay. those kind no, of No, no, it's kind of like, where's the poorest area? Yeah, okay. Poorest neighborhood. Right, right. That's what I mean. Okay. So Wellington is? No, Wellington's a good it's city. It's a good city. It's a good city, but it's got, like, expensive areas, rich people areas, poor people areas. When my dad first started, we didn't have much money. So where he made his first practice is, like, it was a a poor. lowest of the I low. See. It's, like, one of the most dangerous areas, kind of, in Wellington, but sure. it's all right. Wellington dangerous is not, not like that. US dangerous. It's <laughs> like Chicago. <laughs> no, yeah, I was in Chicago, man. I was freaking out. But no, it's, I like, Chicago is cool. Um, 
So he started a small practice. Imagine it was like up two flights of stairs. It was a mess. And he wanted to buy that practice because mm-hmm. it made sense. You know, he worked there. The guy refused. So all my dad did is start another practice just down the road. It's all you know, you know, like a few meters down the road. From there, so my dad has always just ran two to three chairs. Right. I think he wasn't really risk adverse, you know. You got a small family. Yeah, you got to play conservative. You have absolutely. to play super conservative, really, sure, really conservative. Sure. Um, and so I, once I graduated and my brother graduated before me and he like tested us like these are good dentists, they're pretty good. Then he kind of went like super unconservative. I so like money. from three to four years, we grew the group practice it's all a family business there's no outside capital from about four dental chairs to now we operate 39 in wellington within four years 39 chairs 39 chairs holy shit and a full digital lab we have idd lab lab is all the equipment that's legitimate Mm. uh so let me get see if i got it right you first work in that Ghetto practice, for the lack of a better word. I think your dad will be able to hear that. <laughs> my dad was we can cut this part. No, no, I'm really good, sorry. It's good. The uh, first, my dad worked in ghetto practice. And then he tested you guys. No, no. He he's started like the yeah. current practice we work in. It was not ghetto anymore. Yeah. And then he was working in there, but he didn't expand ah, crazy. I see, it was just four chairs. Good and practice. And then he spent money. T- and then once we graduated, it was like expansion, 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 expansion. So he renovated that until... 30, it was actually th- a big building th- that was... 39 th- is all in one location, no, right? No, no, no way. No way. No so way. it's multi-location. Uh, six locations. Six locations. Six Got locations. it. Got it. And the IDD lab... IID lab. <laughs> Hold on, you are ITD. I'm he's, confused. He's IID. Oh, we're we just we're competitors, competitors somehow. Okay. He made a yeah. IDD clone. I didn't even know. IDD. Let's figure out who registered it <laughs> first. Okay. I did, guarantee. What year? Was 2017. Okay, yeah. I started I did IDD. 2021. <laughs> but uh, so I worked I with my you. father in one of our locations. Okay. It's called Nine Nine Dental Clinic. Nine. Nine nine. Nine nine. N-A-E, N-A-E, because the region, uh-huh. it's, it's, a, it's, a Maldi, it's a Maori, it's a Maori yeah. word, which is like a indigenous population, their language. Um, the region is called Nine nine, so it made sense to call it Nine nine dental, you know? Sure. You know what Nine nine means in indigenous language? Tell me. Mosquito, or sandfly, sandfly. Did so you? it's... <laughs> It's sandfly dental. We didn't even know. Wow. So, but whatever. It works. <laughs> it works. So that practice... No one knows, probably. No one knows. That's funny. But that practice is like kind of our hub. So it's now a nine-chair practice. I'm in there. My dad's in there. We have all IDDs in Mom there. Mom practices the too? The lab is in there. Mom, Mom and dad work separately. Really? Yeah, I'm not joking. They tried the same thing. Like work in the same spot early They're on. not... No, they're, they're not... Different, in- different locations. I see. They yeah. don't like each other. <laughs> you can't have they the don't boss. Like each other's you slide. can't have the boss in the clinic and at home. I know. It doesn't right? work. Interesting. So she's got her own practice, or Mama's is like this one super of the... chill, okay. great dentist. And honestly, does great revenue for a single practice. But one chair, super chill, focused on the family, raising the kids. Dad kind of did the business side, entrepreneurial. And she always kept that practice. Always kept it. What are how the time. family dinners look like? Yeah. You're talking, you're showing case you presentations. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are we doing? Like board exams or something? <laughs> Man, like uh, I don't know. We live and breathe dentistry. Like I love it. Right. You love it, yeah, right? Yeah, You could talk about it all day. All day. You yeah, join our ideas. family dinners. Fit right sure, in. Sure, I will definitely um, come. So interesting. Yeah. No, I mean, like it's not all day every day, but. You unwind, you talk about your day, what was good, what was bad, talk about Cases, business. Cases, show this. I mean, when you're do you fam- call your dad, how do I do this case? I used to, a lot. Yeah. A lot, yeah, it's man. It's, uh, I'll tell you one thing that really helped me in my career because I was very fortunate. We're very, you know, there's, it's like, there's a saying that the harder you work, the luckier you get, Absolutely. right? That's Donald Trump's line, but yeah. <laughs> okay, Jesus. Are you allowed <laughs> did to you say know that? that? No, <laughs> I didn't. It That's just good. sounded good. That's okay. But um, are you allowed to say that in LA? <laughs> um... The thing is, is that I was fortunate that I had a big step up. Right. Because my dad's there. He was my, basically, mentor. He was a good dentist as well. He does everything. Implant, surgery. He's a high-end dentist. So when you have that, when you get it straight out of university and work with him, and he's your role model, and who's going to take care of you better than your dad, right? Exactly, yeah. So he helped me a lot. I mean, but I remember, I remember fondly, man. I've only been graduated around seven, eight years. So I remember fondly the first few years. It was like asking for help every time. I couldn't extract teeth properly. 
So he taught you. First year, yeah, I couldn't extract teeth. So 39 chairs in six different locations, nine or six, did I get it right? Six locations. Six locations, and how is dentistry in there overall? How much technology do you have? And how much do you charge? Cause just go through the of details. So uh, what are the top procedures? Crown bridge, I guess. Crown bridge. Okay. How's okay, cosmetic so, so top procedures. I yeah. personally am a GDP, but I kind of like to dabble in a lot of things. And in New Zealand, as long as um, you do things right, mm -hmm. you're okay. Like we don't have the whole dentist can't do implants, for example, GDPs. So I personally do crown and bridge, implants, orthodontics. My dad does a lot of implants, full arch implants. Crown and bridge, he's kind of tapered down. He's focusing more on implants. My brother, orthodontics, crown and bridge. But I would say... Across mm -hmm. all our groups. So we have 39 chairs. It's not just me, my brother, and my dad. We have 13 associates, associate I see. dentists. I see. 13. And like, yeah, 13 associate dentists, a whole team of hygienists, over 100 staff in total. So it's a big, like... That's a pretty it's a big serious operation. operation. It's a serious operation. How much do you charge the patients? Okay, so Crown. First things first for my American friends. Right. New Zealand dentistry is very interesting. It's completely fee for service. Out mm -hmm. of pocket. We like have US. insurance, not like the US. Uh, yeah. Is it? Insurance is not good. Oh, yeah, I heard. But you guys still, you have a lot of insurance. And, and there are good insurance too. In right? New Zealand, in New Zealand, there's no, like, the, um, the percentage of people that have dental insurance is very little. Very little. So the entire dentistry in New Zealand is fee for service, mm -hmm. as in you pay. Mm -hmm. Okay? And so uh, I have been talking to a lot of American dentists, Chicago Midwinter. It's really interesting. I find our fees in New Zealand are the same or very similar to U.S. fees from what I'm hearing. Very similar. The difference is the New Zealand dollar is way weaker than the U.S. dollar. So it's more expensive. Well, oh, no, you guys make more money. Yeah, you guys true. make more money. It's very, I'll give you an example. So the one, U one, U one U.S. dollar is 0. 0.6. Sorry. New Zealand. No. One New Zealand dollar no. is 0. 0.6 U.S. dollars. Correct. And so if we're both charging the same thing, sure. technically I'm... Yeah. Yeah, forty yeah, percent less. Forty percent less. But our tax is very similar. Everything's very similar. So a crown. Right, crown is six, one thousand six hundred and fifty. New Zealand dollars. New Zealand dollars. So it's probably forty percent less. And that's considered four, mid. Four, Some five. people charge two grand. You so know, about a thousand dollars. Similar yeah. to US. Is it? I mean, depending on the where you get it. Mm. Yeah. I've heard uh, way uh, higher figures on the US. For the crown, I think yeah, two, three story, grand. probably two grand. Depends on the zip code. Everything's really similar, honestly. Yeah. Like extractions. I personally charge three hundred dollars standard extraction. What about uh, implant? With crown? Yeah, everything. Uh, implant One single unit. The yeah. surgery single is around two point five to three thousand dollars. And another two grand for restoring. Yeah, two to three. So it's like in total, I personally charge six grand, but the standard is like five, five point five. How is the like? How busy is every practice? How many crowns a month, a year? Good question. I think look. Um, I don't want to offend my New Zealand colleagues here, but <laughs> New Zealand is very much not a culture of chasing money. Okay. So like in this... It's chill. It's chill. Okay. Like they were, if, if a dentist bills, his billings, two grand a day, 2,000, they're like... They're happy. They're happy. I aim for like six to seven. Mm -hmm. But that's because I just like business and entrepreneur and there's other people like that but on average you know it's not that mentality of like push money 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 but let's say uh your question was crowns a, a, a week i think on average they'll do one or two a week one or two a week yeah i'm i like to do one or two a day one or two a day that's a lot that's like a couple of three six about yeah. more than 300 a year and uh right? And yeah, something like that. And more. It's um, you can check out my Instagram, by the way. Just shameless per plug. Per practice or per associate dentist. Per associate one, per one a day, I would say, is decent. That's a lot. Of Not role. normal. That's like you're doing quite well. But I would say the average is doing like one or two a week, average. And in terms of busyness, I think. Look, the funny thing about New Zealand, we've got about three thousand three hundred dentists and a population of five million. Five million. I think. Th on average, it's way less competitive than most places around the world. Mm -hmm. There's, it's just like, if you open a practice, unless you're really downtown in our biggest city, which is Auckland, which mm -hmm. is like 2 million population or something, unless you're downtown there, most suburbs you can open 
and have like basically 5,000 population with no dentists. Some suburbs, 30,000, no dentists is there. So if you open shop, you're going to probably yeah, be busy. Well, what about Invisalign? The cost? The, yeah, same. 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 So like Invisalign, look, it depends. Some people try to undercut the market and just get a lot of cases. So they'll charge like five, 6,000 per case. I charge around 8,000. And our lab fee for Invisalign is around three and a half thousand New Zealand. New Zealand, it's the same thing. Everything's the same. I'm so telling you, I'm, I, I was asking people and I was surprised. It's just the reason why it sounds like US Americans make more money is because it's US dollar. And when you guys take out the US dollar into other countries, it's stronger. Yeah. Whereas when I bring my New Zealand dollars, even though we're yes. making the same money, it's like here 40% is, weaker. Yeah, no, I hear you on that. So how much do you guys net a year? Net. I can tell you what we gross. Net, honestly, I have nothing. No, let's do gross. Let's do gross because yeah. net changes net. and how much yeah, you invested in. And the entire group would be over 15 million. 15 million. Mm, over 15. Of nine. So it's over uh, 51. That's pretty good. Yeah, like we push them That's hard. That's very up. good. You... My dad runs a tight ship. Like we really... We, we really train hard and like talk about numbers, something that's not super common in New Zealand. It's, it's not a society of talking about numbers and like sort of corporate vibes, but we're not, we don't want to be like a, D, a big DSO. But I'll give you an example. We do a lot of training. Mm -hmm. Every week, our dentists join us for a 7 a.m. training every week. And we have staff meetings every week and a lot Who of- Who runs these? My father, he loves the stuff. I see. My, he loves the stuff. Pretty cool. It is cool. So yeah. nine practices, what scanner do you use there? All the scanners. I have every single scanner. Look, the top common No, ones. well, in the practice, come on. Most training, common ones, I get yes. it. Leave the I know you aside. want to be sweet so Leave the training aside. Leave I, ID aside. Leave my ID. I'm going to take my okay. IDD cap off. Uh, your associate right now is grabbing your scanner to... It's either going to be Syracuse or Trios. Prime scan? Or Medit. Yeah, Syracuse Prime scan. It's really simple. And I look at my associates and me, myself, actually. Syrac because we do a lot of same-day dentistry. We I love same-day dentistry. That, and that's the best workflow for milling. Yeah. So using Cyric a lot. And to be honest, anyone who's out there, if they want to see how we do stuff, on my Instagram, at drdoctor.alhassani. Can we look at it Yeah. You can see on my story and what I do. So you can go on my Instagram, and I'm always posting stories of my work in New Zealand and what I'm doing day-to-day. -day. But Cyric for same-day dentistry. Okay. Pretty much everything else is either Trios or Medip. Tears I pick up the Trios 5 because that's an excellent scanner. Everyone knows it's an excellent scanner. Um, and if one of my associates is using that, I'll pick up the Medit. And then I have every other scanner on the market. But like I say, definitely those would be the ones that are dominating. And that's clear. That's there. good for the patient. So any same day you do it with Primus Scan Mill yeah. and any non Anything not crown, problem. which is what? But you need Itero too for Invisalign. Uh, in New Zealand, we're very lucky. Oh, it's open? It's uh, only in the US because Align and 3Shape were suing each other. They right. blocked that. But in New Zealand and Australia and a lot, of, basically most of the world, you can use Trios 3 for Invisalign. Just 3? Just 3. Not 4, not 5. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. Because they had that connection at 3, but they didn't allow it for all the others. But the reality is we do our own aligners now. Our lab makes our yeah. own aligners. We moved away from Invisalign totally just because of that whole mess. I, I just think it's anti-competitive. You don't need to do it that way where no other scanner can use Invisalign, but they have their reasons. Interesting. But you still didn't answer me. So you have three in every practice, basically? The scanners? Yeah. Honestly, what I would really say is because crown and bridge is so common. Like so it's prime scan. Prime scan it's every okay. practice. You can say that. Yeah, I know. I feel scared. <laughs> Why are you scared? <laughs> prime scan every practice, and then either a trios or a medic goes in there. Mm. But I test all the others mainly because the funny thing about Prime Scan, Trios, is that the reason why they're not popular globally is that there's different price points globally, you know. Yeah, yeah. So like that's why you picked up Medit. Yeah. Pick up Meta, pick up the Chinese Scanner C because you know we live in a global world, obviously, and and not everyone has US and New Zealand dollars, and so a guy in Africa, most of Africa. He can't afford a 50K Prime Scan or whatever it is. I don't know what it is in, in US dollars, 30K, 25K. And so that's why I really think, even though I use all the scanners and people are like, why does he use them all? I really think there's a, a, a product for everyone in the market. It's like anything. It's like cell phones. There's a product for everyone in the market. No, if, you've got, you. if you've got money, like most of the... Yeah, uh, you buy the high end. You buy the high end. Oh, yeah. 
developing nations, a lot of people are making like $1,000 a month or something. What's the average salary in New Zealand? Uh, from last, I recall, it's around 90000 90, 95,000 That's pretty good. It's a highway society. Higher than you as well. Well, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Okay. Uh, I see. The thing is that we had like a, uh, we had a kind of left wing uh, government and Uh they pushed minimum wage higher and higher. So minimum wage is quite high in New Zealand, but it's not a cheap country to live in. Rents are high. All economies, you know, they're in bubbles. And what is the relationship with Australia? We're like the little brother. That's like Canada and US? Kind of, but way worse, because Canada is like a big nation. Right. And US is an even bigger nation. Australia is a big nation, and New Zealand is like a cute... So you just... Do you travel to Australia a lot? Freely, or no? yeah, I travel to Australia all the time. It's for like, what? For business? For Courses, business, tra- um, Australia is the number one tourist destination from New Zealand. Because mm, close, it's They're fun. nearby, it's sunny, it's beaches... Three hours and a half, by the way. A lot of Americans don't realize... Fly. Flight. New Zealand's isolated, man. The closest thing to you is three hours and a half. Okay, got it. <laughs> Let's talk about IDD, Institute of Digital, Digital Dentistry. Dentistry. Uh, how did you get it started with the whole process? And I want to go over every detail. Okay. Like, first time you said, I want to do a website. First time. Okay, so I graduated. I went into practice with my father as a new grad. He had, at the time, an E4D scanner. When was, was this? F- 2015, 2016, something like that. Okay. I can't remember exactly. Maybe so, around there. Okay. Okay. E4D. E4D. One of the first scanners in New Zealand that was purchased because no one believed in scanners back then. Yeah. It was like. Yeah, even US witchcraft. was 15. It was yeah. witchcraft. Yeah. It was like, this stuff they doesn't work. To stone. And yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. Now it's like, well. Um, so I graduated, saw that. Okay, cool. And then soon after that, we got a Trios 3, I think the year after. And then we were using the Trios 3. We actually had it with a Roland mill. It, mm-hmm. It's called DG Shape. Sure. Because we didn't want to go for a Sarah because it was expensive. And so we did the Trios route because that was a bit cheaper. And also the E4D was also cheaper than Sarah, blah, blah, blah. We're basically doing the classic thing why people don't buy Sarah is too expensive. And they don't believe in it. And then can come back to They Sarah. go back because it's the best workflow, man. But anyway, um, we had a plan maker because we updated our E4D. And then we... Eventually bought a Cirrus, Cirrus Omnicam. So I was sitting there in 2017, and I had access, very fortunately, because of my father, the business, access to Plan Mecca scanner, Three Shape scanner, Cirrus scanner. And this is a time when no one had scanners. And so I was just using them, and, and through my use as a dentist, because I was and I still am a full-time dentist, using them on patients, I kind of started formulating ideas of their pros and cons. And it's, I think it's also how I interact with the world because I'm, I was born in 1993. I'm that generation that uses internet. Yeah. You know, okay, when you want to buy something, what do you do? You go on Google and you write review. True? Uh, yeah, Stars, exactly. Restaurants. YouTube, figure everything. out what's, yeah, sure. You, it's all reviews and that sort of stuff. And that's how I interacted with the world even back then when internet wasn't that popular. So naturally I was like, there should be reviews on these things that's kind of how it started but i'll i'll be honest the the thing that really made me start idd hand on heart is you know how you guys have study groups or whatever Mm -hmm. dentists get along we have them too in new zealand surprisingly um in 2017 i sat into a study club in wellington new zealand and there was like it was like 50 people packed and uh packed for new zealand and a guy bought out a 3m scanner do you remember the definition yeah yes. of course i think the one before it but okay. maybe let's just say sure with the yeah. ipad whatever where, it was where is that cool. where is that scanner now uh, I don't, they flunked it flunked it why because it wasn't too good no because they sh- didn't keep up with they didn't keep up with it they and didn't innovate stuff. and frankly like compared to trios 3 it wasn't that great just needed to anyhow okay Anyways. so he bought one of those he bought one of those and it was a digital dentistry talk and i was curious i was like let me go see this talk and the guy pretty much didn't mention any other products. It was just 3M is the best. Everyone should buy one of these. It was a classic sales pitch. Classic. In dentistry, this is still common. but It back, is very common, yeah. But back then, even more common. There was no information. And honestly, that hit a chord with me. That was the reason I started IDD. I don't know why it just struck a chord with me. I was like, why is there like no objective information about this stuff? Why, why can someone just stand at the front and just lie? And people bought it. They don't know any different. 
And so from that day, I was like, okay, I came up with the idea, Digital Dentistry Institute or Institute of Digital Dentistry sounded good. It was just quick. I All I wanted to do was write a blog. That's it. So I made a website, really low budget, like no budget, basically. Yeah, sure. It's a hobby. It's a complete passion project. And there was never this vision of speaking. There was never this vision of coming to LA and meeting cool people like you. You're a genius. And it was never n- nothing like that. All I wanted to do was make a blog and write reviews about my personal experience with these scanners as an objective party. I did that for a while. This was back in 2017, 18. It was okay, some traction, but what really made us take off was 2019. Do you remember that scanner review we did, 2019 exactly. ideas? That really made us take off. That was, I wouldn't call it viral because it's dentistry, but like- That some was re- a video, right? Or it was a big article, article, first one of its kind. I went around IDS in 2019. And I tried all the scanners and I just gave them stars based on what I was seeing. And back then it was easy to rate them. Now every scan is kind of good. Back then there was clear differences. This one is yeah, fast, this would, one is slow. Did you test the Chinese too? Panda? And, and I gave them bad ratings back then. None of them work. None so of them work in 2019. Them now they've come a long way. Lanka, Panda, they, yeah, all, they all sucked. 2019 they were terrible. Yeah. I remember one stuck with me. I think, it, I can't remember which one. You scanned with it and then after 30 seconds it's overheated and said you have to wait. <laughs> I never forget no. that. I was like, what is this? <laughs> so I made that 20 Imagine in the mouth of <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Get them a coffee. <laughs> That's funny. Okay. So I reviewed all those scanners and I published it, just like every other blog. And that made us like get a lot of attention. How if did I, you know that you got attention? There was like website hits or shares yeah, or like they were invited. Shit. Like I think it, that page was viewed like four hundred fifty thousand times. Oh wow! Half a million times. Yeah. Wow. And also our subscribers because I did something clever. Like a it's, newsletter? No, it's classic lead generation marketing, and it's thanks to my marketing and business partner, so, okay. Julian. Big shout out to him. Julian, shout out to you Julian, for ID. thank you, sir. Now, uh, we added a little button that said, if you want to download the whole review, just give us your email. And so, so subscribe, yeah. Subscribe. And so now, because of this kind of content generation marketing, which is free, free content, but give us your email. And yeah, it's a newsletter get, business. Yeah. Newsletter. Well, now we have over 60,000 emails. Holy shit. And 40, around a 35 to 40% open rate. That's very good. They open, man. They want to hear from us because trustworthy and we've built this like one really important ideal for me with IDD from the start was I want to provide objective information. And I told you we run kind of like a family mini DSO. So it's actually not my main financial money maker. Mm-hmm. I make enough money from clinic. So it's really passion. I mean, of course you need to make it money. You don't just do things for free. Yeah. But it's not like oh, a company gives me $20,000 and I'm going to say it's the best thing. Like a lot of newspapers, newsletters, all that. So it's always been provide objective information. What works? What doesn't? What's the pros? What's the cons? And that resonated with people. I think that's why they trust the brand now. So you started with... A blog. A blog in intraoral scanners. Mm. And then uh, walk me through it. So okay. this is 2019. I remember 2019. it. And then you got some Bang. hits. That page got reviewed. That and page then, got viewed a lot. Okay. And then... When was COVID? 2020. 2020. 2020 hit, and to be honest, it was one of the best things that happened to me for IDD. Because as any dentist knows out there, we're super busy and we're super stressed all the time. We don't have time to think. So I'm running five days a week practice, helping dad run the practice, and doing IDD. It's just passion. I just love teaching, educating, sharing, networking with people like you. COVID hit, clinic stopped. We got locked down. It was pretty light in New Zealand, but I think it was like three, four months. Once... That lockdown happened. I was thinking, I was like, okay, what do I do now? Classic, like you, you can't sit still, right? We didn't just eat pizza all day. You just do something. (laughs) I didn't go to the beach or anything. You're not allowed. And I didn't watch TV all day. So I was like, okay, I have this big email list and I'm in New Zealand. I'm geographically isolated. As nice as New Zealand is, people aren't going to come from US to New Zealand for a two-day course. Some may, but not many. So the thought was, okay, so what do I do to be able to offer something to these people? A, obviously make some money, Mm -hmm. but B, to provide more value because it's all about value to me, providing education. I love that stuff. So I basically in that COVID time did a whole education platform. So I think it was one of the first ones in digital dentistry in the world, especially being brand agnostic, just covering whatever. And so what I actually did was just record a whole bunch of videos, COVID time, in the clinic, in the thing. It was the best thing that ever happened to me. 
And so in COVID, mm. we launched IDD online purely to be able to reach selling people. Selling courses, yeah. Selling courses. I got a big list. I want to reach people. Because I do courses. I do live courses in Australia and New Zealand all the time. But most of my mailing list is US, US and Europe. You guys are the leaders, man. US dentists are really onto it. They're yeah, really they're, they like to hear that. And mm. you're right. There is a big gap. Big divide. I did a podcast with Dr. August Oliveira about mm. KOL. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you watched that and what it means. Uh, it's very KOL driven. Mm. And that has been diluted into, as you said, it's very paid. So, mm. But no, it's a, it's a very good niche and a gap that you addressed. I was fortunate, man, and I, I, it was never to be this like, oh, I'm the objective guy. It was purely just how I wanted information. To yeah, me, sure. you should have been able to Google a scanner and write review. Can and we test it. one of them right now? Please. I just, what is Any it? scanner you want. If you write review, it will come up in Google. Which one do you like? Let's pick. We Prime can scan. do the usual suspects, but just let's suspect. go with a, something more... Uh, do, obscure. <laughs> do obscure. Do an obscure okay. one, not the usual ones. Uh, the, I don't want a usual one. Let's go with something more obscure. How, subs, how, how suspect are we going to go? Uh, let's, okay, I'm recording the screen. All right. What do we do? Let's do a... Tell me. I don't know. Runes. Runes scanner. It's a Chinese one. How's Rune? Runes. R-U-N-E-S. E-S. Scanner like, review. Sorry for the New Zealand accent. Oh, there we go. <laughs> you have an ad too. Yeah. Dandy. And then we reviewed Runes. I like the title. That's clickable. What do you think, Jamie? It's like Allied Star. Mm. It's, all uh, it's funny. So Google sends you this thing, right? So they send you this thing. Google sends you this thing. I didn't even know. Where it's like, uh, let me bring this up for you. It's, and I can send you a screenshot so you can put it in. They send you oh, a I thing. Have a video. I see. Let's see. So Google sent you this thing like this. So one thing that Search we did. Search impact. Yeah. So one thing we did really well with IDD, probably the best thing I did, and the team did. It's not just me. Was that we worked not actively on SEO, but all our titles are like. Scanner review, scanner review. Google loves this stuff. And because we've been doing it for three years, now we rank for pretty much everything. Any scanner you write and put review in, we will be in the top page. And so just from Google, not any advertising I do, just in the last month, we got 12,000 clicks from Google search in 28 days. That's just brilliant. Br pretty much from what you do. So you have AdSense revenue? Not ads. This is just all just organic. Simply. Do you have AdSense? No. Yeah, we do ads. Now I have a marketing guy. This is yeah, yeah, for no, the dentists it. out there. You need manpower. You hire marketing no, guys. No, you can't do it yourself. You can't do it yourself. I gotta have a team. How big is the team now? Started as me with a blog, and now sure. it's eleven or twelve people. Holy! Just I did. Yeah, man. Just like you, from though. From writing and that's copywriters big. and two really good marketers and oh, you have these and video these editors. Speed. This was the thing. Do you remember this thing? Where's the accuracy? There's none. Because they're all accurate? No, because I can't actually test. I will never comment on something that I can't test, right? Like, how do I test accuracy? I can help you with that. Please. You want two ways. Please. Uh, and also, they're kind of all accurate now. Uh, no, well, sort of. Sorta. Not really. So for a single is they're accurate enough? Okay, what is, let's talk about the video first. Yes, sir. And today, I have another scanner unboxing video for you. I see. So you do the unboxing. Now, so now it became other. like a tech influencer. It turned from blog to now doing unboxings, to doing reviews, to talking about new tech. The Rooney's 3DS. Sorry, got it. Is this Allied Star? Rooney's 3DS. It's diff Rooney's is different to Allied Star. It's you can see the, the Allied Star one. It's no, not the same tech. Different tech. scanner. Because they all them to... They're all the same, but yeah, they The... Okay, what was your question? How do you study... Accuracy. So how, I'll tell you how two, I've done accuracy. Two, okay, tell me. I've done how, how I've done accuracy between the scanners. Because I'm fortunate in my clinic, I have access to all the scanners. I get a patient, do a crown prep, and then I scan them with like 10 scanners. Poor patient, I know, but mm. it's okay, I'm fast. Scan them with 10 scanners. Same person, same environment, same prep. And then I can merge all those meshes together and see if there's a difference. Merge all the meshes from every other scanner. One, two, three, four, five, six. Merge them. Okay. And see if there's any deviation. Okay, got it. That's there's, from there's, a one is patient. Sorry? From one patient? From one patient. What is the reference? That's the issue. Yeah. You can only see deviation, yeah, but you can't yeah, see yeah, reference. Yeah. But I can tell you there's no deviation. 
Uh, <laughs> that more, yeah, I, believe, I think there are three ways you can test accuracy. Right. One of them is, I think, in general, something fits or doesn't. That's the most Pretty important easy. thing. That's, that's, let's put that aside. You either need a reference uh, model mm. that, you can measure that has something. to be with a super accurate, like a model that is CNC milled, measured, certified. That's one way. Mm-hmm. Or you take one of your scanners that you believe it's the best. The best accurate. As a reference. As a reference. You scan a model with that, and then that's your reference, whatever. It's a tree is your god. You <laughs> put it there, and then the rest is you compare everything with trios. Mm. The bad, the, essentially the caveat of doing that is you have to trust trios or whatever. Otherwise, if that reference <laughs> is bad, it's exactly. all bad. The way that they do it, you have to like mill a model, print a model, and then do a, something called CMM, which is a traditional measuring system. Mm. Then to you, measure it, to It's like reference. a probe called mechanical. Imagine. And they do point by point, you create a point mm. cloud, you create the STL of that, and then you s- compare to that. But and that's a the lot thing, of like even, like uh, I'm a clinician, man. I'm not an academic. But you should do that. I should one day, but to be honest. Because a lot of, on a, let me tell you this, I'm not in the scanner market, so I can just make that statement. There is a lot of algorithm stitching mistakes mm. that uh, software just kind of extrapolates and gloss over a lot of details. I want to ask you a question. What do you think? Is it the algorithm stitching mistakes or the operator mistakes? Uh, I, I think it's the operator. No. I think the operator. I don't know. I think the, I've seen a lot of scanners. I look at the tip with the mirror, how flimsy it yeah, is. Yeah, that's a whole separation. There, no, there, there's no way this can be accurate. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think uh, today's technology with so much improvements, operators, it's hard to mess it up. It's manufacturing quality, how mirrors are calibrated, how, the, how optics are good, mm. how much those mirrors are accurate, first mm. surface, those kind of things. Two, how good are the algorithms? This is, we're geeking out on the tech, okay? You're an engineer. Yes, but at the end of the day, they all somehow work <laughs> because the accuracy Especially for the these stuff, days, man, it's they just work. so forgiving. I'm telling you, you know how you said the second way is a reference? Let's say prime scan is the god. Right. Or trios is the god. I've done that. I always, I don't just scan 10 nobody scanners. I always have like a Cirrus, a trios 5, and I reference them all. It's not super academic, and that's why... I no, no, that's good. I, that works. That's, that's why I don't put any statements about accuracy in my reviews. Right. It's only based on what I'm doing. But I will reference all those scanners, these cheap Chinese scanners, everything from like the $5,000 one, mm-hmm. comparing it to Prime Scan, Trios 5, uh, Medit, and for a single crown, dentures for large is different. Yeah. But let's say single crown, the most common indication. Yeah, I promise that works. You, all of them work. There's no deviation. Yeah, most Do of them. Do you believe this? There's no deviation. I should, I'll, and I'll send you some photos to put on the, the then video. They, it can't be no deviation. There is always a range. Tiny, you're usually like, like you're under like under 20, minus yeah, 10. Like what's your reference? What's exactly. your what's your what's your accepted weeway? Accepted tolerance. Fifty to one hundred and fifty microns. One hundred and fifty is a lot. <laughs> tolerance, you mean? No, I mean deviation. Like, no, 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 not one hundred fifty. <laughs> I mean, I, I'll show you. I'll I mean, show you, plus or minus. I'll show you the, the uh, I do it on Medit, compare. I'll show you the okay. screen captures. So why are you called the Medit guy then, if you're so neutral? Yeah, I know. Everyone thinks I'm the Medit guy. Every company. How did that happen? You spoke too much for them or? No, you know how it happened? I was instrumental in, I don't want to say instrumental in their success. That's so cocky and arrogant. But let's just say in 2019, no one was thinking of Medit, right? right? No one even considered Medit. It was just Cirrus, Trios, and Plan Maker, sort of. I did this review, and Medit at the time was decent. The i500 now is garbage. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. Compared to the 700? Yeah, or? it's not very good now compared to the 700. Yeah. But at the time, in 19, it was like, wow, this is a cheap scanner that actually works. The rest didn't work. Do you know how I told you the one mm-hmm. overheated? Yeah, yeah. The others <laughs> didn't work. They were cheap. It was the first cheap one that worked. Exactly. Yeah. And I put it in the review. And then I was working with them a lot. They saw it. They picked it up. They thanked me a lot. They're like, this is the first time like someone put us side by side with uh, trios and stuff. And so then, I mean, the rest is history. They, I, I used the other scanners. I was doing videos for them, webinars, uh, mainly just content. I'm, I'm in the game of content, and I do what attracts attention so that people read, interact with our website. And 
I was doing more and more stuff with them, but equally for Serik and Trios. I think why I'm the medic guy is Serik, Serik and Trios have their KOLs, right? They're established brands. You know mm. who's the Serik guy? Serik doctors. So they don't really interact with me at the time much. They're already established. Now they do. Trios have their KOLs. They already have the guys that use them. Meta had no one. So I came out and said, this is good, guys. This is a really good cheap scanner. Like, it's a good alternative if you don't have any money or you're on a budget to Trios or Serik. It's a good alternative. And that really took off. And then Medit, as you know, was a runaway success. Absolutely. Whether you agree or not with how they sold it and pumped it up, but they did sell it for, what was yeah, it, like $2 one, billion, $2 billion, $2 billion. $2 billion. So, and so a lot of companies from the outside, a, a, lot, lot, of, a, lot, of companies. a lot of companies from the outside, when they see me reviewing and educating about Medit, they're like, oh, he's a Medit guy, he's paid. For the record, I'm not on the camera. <laughs> for, the, for the record, I am not on a Medit payroll, and I, no no company has ever paid me and been like write a good review. Mm -hmm. And it's clear. I always tell them from the start: there's no paying me for a review. You pay me for me to do some review videos. You pay me for my time that I'm going to invest into testing your product. But there's no way in hell it's not a, like a sponsored ad in a magazine. And I think that's why it came out, like, you're the medic guy, you're the medic guy. But these are just people that don't really know me. Because if you go on my Instagram, I'm using Serik more than anything. I'm a crown guy. Mm. <laughs> You'll see when I'm doing my stories, it's Serik and Trios, Serik yeah. and Trios. All I did was say that Meta is a re really good alter alternative that's low cost. Interesting. For a buyer now, don't mm. you think right now mm. your scanner review section is very crowded it's mm -hmm. still not confusing like very. what am i gonna do very you don't make recommendations right no okay well, do, then how is it helping people okay i genuinely You're just confusing do, him i do i do it's a good point actually and i'm actually you, you may have noticed i didn't do an ids review of skinners this shit he didn't do it no, i didn't do i was it. expecting that do you know why i didn't do it because of too much no not too much i got time it's it's just becoming mundane in the sense i'm just saying it's every skin thing, is yeah. fast Every scanner's fast now. Before you could say, here's the scanners, here's the really good ones, here's the bad ones. But now, honestly, every scanner's fast. I've used every scanner. I can do a full arch scan with every scanner. 30 seconds. 30 to 60 seconds, every single one. The technology plateaued. So now what it is is software and workflow. And what I'm trying to do is reinvent the reviews to focus on that. Focus on the more advanced stuff. Workflow, software, AI. And that's harder to kind of objectively test than which one's fast, which one's slow. But hand on heart, I can say that every scanner that's modern, don't buy an older generation, is fast now. And so that brings an interesting point. When people do ask me, because a lot of people reach out to me on email or Instagram, which one should I buy? I give them references and I give them my opinion. I'll make it really clear. Same day dentistry. You want to mill. A CEREC. A yeah, CEREC. Everyone knows that. Sure. Second, if you don't want to mill, you just want to scan and send device. If you have money, Trios 5. It's a killer scanner. Everyone knows that. They're killing the game. If you're on a budget, you just started a new practice, you don't have a lot of money, you're not rich. You know, some people are not rich. Some people are rich, they have heaps of money, they'll buy five Trios and not blink. So what would you recommend? Mid it. Why, not, why don't you recommend Allied Star? Because of Getting there, that's a lower price bracket. I see. Okay, so you go from like Cyric, to Trios, that's lower price bracket, to Medit, that's lower. And then if you're even more of a budget, like Medit is even too expensive for you because Medit's not cheap anymore. Before it was, a, the lowest cost Medit is 13,000 US. You can get scanners for 6,000 now. Mm -hmm. so see what I mean? Yeah, it's like a totally. price, you just gradiate them. So okay, Medit's too expensive for you. You don't want the software and the apps and everything. You're gonna have to pay for a cheaper scanner with even worse software, okay? Cheaper than Medit, and I would say close to Medit now is, is Shining 3D, excellent scanner from China. But then you get a little political. Some people don't like buying Chinese products. So you, maybe you don't buy that. That's reality. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Some reality. people don't. Absolutely. I'm not going to say which countries don't. Yeah. <laughs> okay? So if it's, not allied if it's not Shining 3D, then what do you do? You go even a tear down. The scanners that have pretty much no software, but now in the market, it's basically like a price gradient especially for the average user of a scanner who's just using it for a single crown. Let's make that really clear. Whatever social media says, the most common indication is a single crown, not all on X and not dentures. Mm -hmm. Got a lot of money, get the Trios 5. 
If that's out of your budget, Meta will do the trick and it has excellent software. That's out of your budget, maybe you go down to an Allied Star. That's out of your budget, you go down to some of the Chinese scanners, etc., etc. Some people don't like buying Chinese products for whatever reason. So that's, they all work. And what you will find is the more money you spend, the more software you get. Yeah. When did you get involved in the 3D printing? That was the first printer you had, Guess Form what? Labs, right? Yeah, yeah, our first printer was Form Labs Form 2. What year was that? That must have been 2017. 17. Pretty cool. Long surgical time. guys or models. Models Small, and surgical models guys. guys. You, you, I said it on the stage. You, you freaking started this wave of 3D printing crowns. We did. You are like, I say to people, you're like the Tesla of <laughs> 3D printing. Thank you. I'll I'm take serious. That. Because just like Tesla, no one thought about electric cars as being mainstream. Right. Before Sprint Ray doing what they did, printing was purely models and surgical guides. And then you guys really re, you know, re-engineered the whole thing and, and changed people's thinking. And now we're talking about splints, which are very good. And we're talking about crowns and restoration. So our first one was the Form Labs. As you know, the company did very well at first. Mm-hmm. On the market, in the dental field, Everyone has a form lab. Do you remember those days? Yeah. Now the it's not the same. The market has changed. So yeah. that was our first printer, and then we eventually got the rest done. Now we have over ten printers in the clinic, just testing them. No one needs ten printers, but I'm just testing them, trying to write reviews, explaining to people what's the difference. Yeah, it's the focus that made us strong and where we are today and that's the only thing we do and that's mm. not the case with others and mm. three things of software hardware materials we talked mm. about that. so what about night guards what about night guards do you when, print those too of course we only started around um a year and a half two years ago when key splint soft became available in new zealand in new zealand and then my we started material using, is by the way approved uh, night guard yeah. when did it get approved a uh, month ago. Amazing. Is so, Australia New Zealand? Yeah, basically. Yeah. <laughs> Don't make that mistake, man. Australia. Yeah. It got approved. It's not that it is. It is, very smart. But New Zealand uses TGA, which is Australia's. i got to ask my regulatory <laughs> name. <laughs> I was going to take it. Yeah, look, and honestly, just seeing, and this is not because I'm here. Right, sure. At the HQ. There's no one holding a gun at me outside the frame. But <laughs> I, the, the, new, the new split material looks great, man. Absolutely, really good. Yeah. Straight out. It's, it's, it looks and feels like a fantastic material. Now we just try and patient's mouths and see. How but we did use the previous one, the Flex. It was also as good. Yeah. I would say it, it felt like key splint soft. Yeah, this one is just stronger and mm. just pol- you saw the polishability, those kind of things. I want to hear your, forget I'm sitting here, overall three different things, your unfiltered thoughts. Yeah. And where do you want the direction of the industry to be? Sure. So I think... Even though I'm a big Emacs guy and a big Ceric guy, I am very well aware because I've traveled around the world at different conferences and talked to a lot of dentists that uh, Ceric is never going to be mass market. They've tried for 25 years. And what is their penetration? 15%? Probably. Something like that. Mm. After all those years of marketing. Why is it not going to be mass market? It's too expensive. And they don't want to change. So, And it's milling technology, blah, blah, blah. So... If people don't have access to mills, what's the second best thing? Printing. Printing. And not just second best thing. Printing does a lot of good things really well. Surgical guides, much better than mills. Splints, much better than mills. So in my opinion, honestly, anyone who gets a scanner is getting a printer. I see printers being in every practice in the future, much more than mills. Mm -hmm. Of course they will be. At the most basic thing, you know, you have the data here. What are the two most common indications people print? Models and guards. Models and splints. Models. Models. And first the reason and why guards. is like as dentists, we used to take impressions and pour up stone mm-hmm. to make a model. So now we all digitize. We have scanners. How do we make a model? You print it. You yeah. need a printer. What are you going to do? Send it to the lab every time? No, you need a printer. So I think like a scan and a printer is like one and the same thing. I love printing. Even though I give printing crowns a lot of uh, resistance. Um, I love printing. I, don't, I think it's an amazing technology. I think, honestly, dentistry is like an amazing profession. Like, which other job gets to play with this sort of stuff? Tell exactly. me. <laughs> Most jobs are like office jobs, and dentists yeah. here are talking about AI and printing and milling. Like, how cool is that? No, it's Scanners cool. it's and... It's addictive. It's addictive, man. It's addictive. So, to answer your question, I think printing is going to be in every practice, has to be in every practice. And I think for some things, it does it 
exceptionally well and for th some things it needs development. Like we talked about downstairs at the Sprint Ray HQ, there's like six indications for printing, right? Models, it's kind of done deal. They print accurately. The models look nice, done. Splints, it's kind of a done deal. It's gonna be incremental improvement, but it's gotten to the point where printing splints is as good if not better than thermoforming them. Yes, there's some wear issues and people are saying they're wearing down, but the materials are just gonna get better and better. And I have no doubt at some point not it's our gonna... material. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. So in, in our lab, we do about 50-50. 50% thermoform, 50% printed. And that's like sending it to outside dentists. Mm -hmm. And I, any lab out there listening will know the last thing you want is to be experimental with other people's work. Yeah, no, I hear Internally, you. you can be experimental because you can correct the issues. But if you're sending it to others, they don't send back to your lab if things break. So, model splints, perfect. What's left? Surgical guides. Everyone prints them. You don't mill those anymore. What about dentures? Dentures, I think, from it's what you're... It's not a chair side procedure, per se. I do you do denture in your practice? Yes, yes we do. We have, three, we have four denturists in the practice. Do they print? Yes. With what? What do they print with? Either they've been using either... Is it Nix? I think Nix Dent or yeah. Sprint Ray material. No, not. Oh, ours is not no, approved. No, you're not New approved. It, they, use Nix it Dent. they use Nix Dent. Yeah, I need. You the, need thing, to the whole TGA thing is, a, yeah. is an issue for me. Sure. Got but it. anyway, so. Move we're, to you. <laughs> yeah, move to you, Wes, and then I can't work as a dentist. <laughs> anyway, so uh, we we um, print dentures, but we also mill Ivotion. Yeah, Ivotion is good. And again, not everyone's going to have an Ivotion mill. So for those that don't, I think printing dentures is a really good option to offer. But for those who have both options, it's getting to the point where Ivotion is the gold standard and printing needs to beat it. What about a printed Ivotion? That'll be unreal if you can do that. If you can start printing PMMA, sign me up. We print dentures though. For all our immediates, we print them. Well, print, it's not going to be printing PMMA. It's going to be something as good or better. By the way, our latest materials, we have third-party study, Loma Linda, it's better than PMMA. The data that the show showed, there you go. we're outperforming PMMA. And I won't be surprised. I mean, a lot of the time when we talk about printing, right, I would love to do this in one year's time, right? Because a lot of the time we're talking about a snapshot in history. Right. You know? How fast is the industry moving? Very fast. Every three months. Exactly. There's something new. And so right now, I think printing dentures is there. Do I think it's a chair-side solution? No. Why? Which dentist is going to chair-side design a denture? Except for Wally Renee. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, who else is going to? It's not a chair-side. Very few people yeah. are going to learn Exocad <laughs> to that level and start designing chair-side. It just doesn't happen. Yeah. Dentists don't want to learn Exocad on it. Not chair-side, but you can produce it instead of sending to the lab. Of course, oh, yeah. but I mean... Even we design it in our portal, by the way. Yeah, I know. You guys do a lot yeah, of amazing design, design yeah, stuff. Yeah. The only printer company that does designs and has a design service. And integrated. Exactly. And integrated. Don't forget. Use Freaking the right <laughs> words. <laughs> then we get to, okay, so dentures, great. It works. Then we get to restorations. You have to be Emacs and Zirconia. Do I think you can one day? Yes. Do I think there's going to be a day? Look, I never write off something, ever, because history has proven things change. Correct? Mm -hmm. Before, we used to laugh at scanners. Do you remember the days people used to laugh at it? I remember. You used to give lectures and people like scanners don't work. They're less accurate than PVS. Do you remember those days? Crazy. Crazy. I can't even believe it. So that wasn't that long ago. ago. <laughs> that wasn't that long ago. <laughs> and so if that happened, things can change. And look, ceramic, it wasn't as popular as it used to be. We used to do PFM for everything. In university, I was doing PFM crowns. There was no ceramic on posteriors. Now it's all ceramics. Monolithics and zirconia and Emacs. So... When we get that material that changes the game, everything will shift. When we get that What do you reason, want in that material? Two things. Okay. Three things. <laughs> three things. Three things. Can I ask for one or three things? Okay. Aesthetics, right now, most printed They don't look good. They don't I, look good. I own up to that. You heard it from the man, guys. They don't look good. Whatever the it will Facebook get <laughs> marketing says, whatever the group says, Instagram, they don't look good. They look okay. They look like composites. It but when you put there. it side by side to ceramic, that's it. The aesthetics needs to improve. And aesthetics in two ways. The shades need to look better and not just like, uh, not just um, gradation, which will be hard. I don't know how you're going to figure that one out. But 
They can't just be like a dull, solid color. And also the translucency needs to improve. It needs to just look not dead. Anyway, that's one thing. Aesthetic, durability. Durability. It needs to last, man. We're seeing, you, you see the groups. Yeah. And it's giving printed crowns a bad name. Because mm. they're not, there's... It's a wear? The wear and the acid and after four, that's five... That's not us, though. That's not <laughs> these guys. There's yeah. no... But, you know what I mean? And, like, and I feel like the time frame of how long it's last has become quite short. We need it to last, like, five years, not six months. Yeah. We, before Ceramic Crown, mm. we did a five-year simulation chewing test mm. in all of them with those German lab for that mm. purpose and compared it with other solutions. You know what that. I think will really change it? Uh-huh. And, it, and only time will show this is in vitro studies. Exactly. That's it's the just the time. It's time. So number three. Research. Research. Yeah, we need research. And I don't mean like academia research. I mean time. We need time. No time. We need aesthetics. We need durability. And we need time. We need these cases like Emacs. You know, have you seen their research scientific paper? And this thick. This thick. And they're like, oh, it lasts for 15 years. We've followed it up. Right now, it's like, oh, this last three months, this last six months. Look, as a dentist, and I know people say, oh, you can just replace it. You reprint another one. No, no, no. Yeah. You don't want the patient to come back. Uh, no, they, I get it. They don't, just don't want them to come back. If something happens, you lose trust with the patient. Exactly. They, think you're, they don't think you know what you're doing. But that's the main things. Now, do I think printed crowns will never beat ceramic crowns? No, I don't yeah, think so. Yeah, you never that. say never. Never say never. Wait for spin ray. People like Until you are very smart. You've got like a whole engineering team down there. Yeah. It will happen. But do I think, am I like one of those... You know, guys on the horse rushing into this and like yelling, it's it's the next big thing. I like to take a more reserved approach. I don't know, is this the IDD nature where it's like based on my experiences, based on my clinical experiences, based on what I'm seeing. And what I'm seeing is it's really promising, it's accurate, it works. We just need the right material. And saying that, so as I mentioned, the materials are changing. What did you just release? Ceramic crown? Have I tried it? No. Have I had access to it? No. Are people saying it's really good? Yes. And also, the reality of the situation is is that milling Emacs and Zirconia doesn't work for everyone globally. Some people want a lower cost option. Some people want an option where they can do same day dentistry. There's a lot of different options. Some people in this day and age now are milling composite blocks and, and placing them as crowns and they're lasting. Mm-hmm. So it's not to say that everyone has to use Emacs and Zirconia. And the other thing I'm going to mention is that the materials are changing very fast. How often do you guys do material science down there? A every lot. Day. It's not in this building, but a lot. The material every is changing day. every three months. Every iterating. three to four months. Yeah, every year we've been. Like you saw the Onyx. Every year we got a new gen. So, yeah, it is changing fast. And on the, mater- and the ceramic crown, I mean, you get started pretty soon on it. Uh, we did three major testings to get it going. The first one was bonding test, just making sure it doesn't debond because mm-hmm. all the earlier f- testings of the lava and those kind of things, it was debonding, mm-hmm. coming loose. Then fracture load. It has a pretty good fracture toughness, even mm-hmm. more than what Emacs has when it mm-hmm. comes to fracture toughness. So it doesn't mm-hmm. break, it doesn't debond. The third one was chewing test three to five years, and it performed. It really lasts that three to five year time range. Let's talk about different 3D printers in the market. Yes, I know sir. You, I'm putting on the spot in front of me, but... I don't mind. Yeah, gave him a, you gave me a pretty good explanations and recommendation on the scanning market. Mm. What about the printer? What is it that someone got to look for when they're in the market for a printer? I think now, and uh, quite a lot of literature has shown that geometrically, most printers can print accurately. Would I agree, agree with that. I 100% agree. So with the that. technology is done. They all print accurate, so it's not an accuracy game. I think the thing that's separating printers now, chair side or lab, let's say chair side for the dentists out there. Right. Workflow, software, how easy is it to delegate? And more importantly, resins that you have access to. Because when you're trying to get a printer, you are basically as a dentist trying to make a, a appliance. Mm-hmm. And what that basically means is you want to use a resin. And typically, you want to use the best-in-class resin. For example, in the days before you made your resin for splints, Key Splint Soft came out. It was the best. If your printer didn't print Key Splint Soft, what do you do? 
Yeah. Like I had a Form Labs at the time. I didn't print it. And then you switch. You switch. Yeah, you buy yeah. another printer. Exactly. And so that's kind of the play. You need to think about the end result and how to get there. Now, speaking of all the printers, and I've said this in lectures, I've said this in webinars. It's not just here because you're in front of me. I strongly see Sprint Ray as the Cirrus of the printing world. And what does that mean? Best workflow, premium price, but not like super premium like Cirrus. But it's up there. It's not the cheapest printer. And I don't think you want to be the cheapest. I don't want to be. Why would you be? People buy Rolexes and BMWs. Yeah. Why would you be <laughs> the uh, Toyota? Yeah. But anyway, um, so best workflow, best software. And I think what you guys came to the market that was really intelligent early on is a whole solution. Kind of like what Cirrus did. Mm -hmm. They provided scanner, software, mill. You guys provided Printer, software, wash, cure. Most and materials. And materials. And materials now. Yes. Uh, or, yeah, at the beginning we didn't have But it, you gave but the wash yeah. and the cure, which is really it important. It, it sounds like nothing, but I think it was genius because so many other printers pivoted from jewelry to dental and just gave dentists a, a printer. And that's you can't do anything with just a printer. Absolutely. Yeah, and you saw the stuff we're doing to make it even easier with our cloud ecosystem. You're with the only your one click, <laughs> one, one click, click solution. One use. I showed it to you. Yeah. It was there. And what's, also, what's your thought on that? Unreal. So what's basically happening is that smart geniuses at Sprint Ray. Amir is a ridiculously smart entrepreneur, <laughs> but we're, the idea is to remove the software. Basically, that we're well, not to remove it. The splint, the the printer cam, you don't need to click through it anymore. Just do it on the printer. Yeah. And that's genius. You're basically going to go from scanning to going to your printer and clicking print. And treatment planning in our ecosystem is key. That's why I built it, because mm. you can't control everything if you want to go, oh, now I'll take it to Exocad, now I'll take it to 3 shape. And I think this is the biggest strength of your company, genuinely. Genuinely. Is that most other printing companies in dental rely on other people's resins, yeah. most, the good ones. The good resins are usually third-party resins, not from a company. Form, and I'm not talking about models and surgical sure, blades. No, no, no one no, cares no. about it's that. Just, yeah. Appliances, no, dentures, restorations, yeah. Yeah. appliances and splints. Models and surgical guides, everyone does it. Who cares? But the real key thing, and I think what is interesting dentists the most about printing is restorations and splints. Appliances, that's where the ROI is. I have this philosophy that people who are serious about dental 3D printing should do their own hardware, software ecosystem, and materials. It's almost impossible to get it right mm. without doing it because there are a lot of things in the material that we're addressing with the hardware and a mm. lot of things in forming that resin into the right shape, mm. right strength that we're addressing it with software. Also, I think that's it makes you very agile. Yeah, you You're the just... most agile 3D printing company on the market right now in dental. What do I mean by agile? How much stuff have you released in the past 12 months? Oh, my God. I can't even count it. How much stuff have other companies released? <laughs> I don't. I can't even count it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh. <laughs> so, like, and what I like, and there's no shame in this, even if a competitor releases something, you make it better and release. Yeah. It's like a chess game. It's You got to make it better. We... I love when competitors point out Sprint Ray doesn't have this. I'm like, perfect, <laughs> let's go make it. Let's go do it. It's like the best thing is when they do side by side with me. This is what you guys are doing, in my yeah. opinion, the best. Also, every Catch time you on. release something, it's like all you hear about is Sprint Ray. And yeah. I've told other companies, their marketing is the best. Uh. Learn from them. <laughs> they release products very fast. They release things that are... Dentists want, like the whole crown kit. Everyone did a small plate and people were doing them, but you guys made the small build platform. Sorry, the you, everyone did the small build platform, but you guys made the small resin tray. That was the key. Genius. Yeah. And it's patented, by Gen the way. If you can copy no, it, it'll come after. <laughs> <laughs> Don't copy it. So it's like, you guys, and look, the focus on dental shows. Yeah. The sure. focus on dental shows, because yeah. you, I think you wouldn't figure that out if you really didn't have your sites on dentistry that's the only thing we do my friend to the software the and it's like the focus on dental oh, we're shows. focused that's only yeah. that's the only thing we do and it's interesting like being in your hq i didn't realize before you focused on dental yeah that you had so many other opportunities in jewelry with disney yeah, yeah, it's crazy really. why would you focus on dental man why? what made you focus on I, dental i'll tell you why that 2016 17 i was just following what four was doing back then okay Again, I'll admit that. 
They were jewelry, dental, everything. And there was no way we could beat them in any other industries. They were more mature, they were in that second generation, they had more established, well, like 10 people, they were like 300 people. But dental, they didn't have speed. Mm -hmm. And the more I looked at dental, I saw an empty land. I'm like, what if I become the dental player? Focus, go deep. And surgical guide on sprint rate was 30 minutes and format was four hours back then. Mm. And I was like, that's the easy value proposition to them. That's the main motivation. And the more we went deeper, we just felt like, oh, this is, this is fun. Mm. This is really exciting. Kudos to you, man. And, and it worked out. Big time. And on resin, you know, we were not making our own resins when we started. I'm a mechanical engineer. It was just hardware, software background. But um, we were using Nextent. And they, Next in resin. Yeah. Holy. Then they cut us loose. The joke. Yeah. Is. This 2017, 18, they got bought by 3D Systems, and they said we're not selling resin to anyone. We're uh. not selling the hardware. They cut our supply, and then I picked up the phone, called a professor of mine during the PhD program who had a composite class with. That's the only guy I knew who could at least think of making resin. And I said, Hey man, <laughs> I'm doing this nice. company. Can you formulate resin? <laughs> like, yeah. You can come over. He joined and full t part time at first, then full time. We built the whole resin out of necessity because I said I can't run a company like this. These guys changed direction and mm -hmm. cut our supply, and we built everything in 2017 around Nexon. That's the how I'm so grateful that thing happened because without it, I would have not built my own resin capabilities. And now look at you guys. And now, yeah, and now this is the reason that we're winning. And people like chair side printing is synonymous with sprint right now. Love that. Thank yeah, you. Seriously. I'll take that. Everyone thinks the nowadays and you can see it, don't don't take it from my mouth, but anyone who thinks of the premium chair side printer, they think of sprint rate. What about non premium? Depends how cheap you want to go. Do you wanna go frozen? But I think we both know about those printers. I really think there's an oversupply. Right. And the market's way too crowded and things will slowly die off. All right. Pretty exciting, Ahmed. It's an exciting time to be in dentistry. So 100%. much happening. So what advice do you have for some dentists for two types? Dentists who are starting off mm. or people who are comfortable making their money and want to change? Okay. Let's cover the starting off, guys. Okay. So dentists who are just graduating now. Uh, I would highly suggest you subscribe to IDD, give me all your money. No, I'm joking. Okay. No, I'm joking. I would highly suggest... <laughs> that any dentist graduating now, they it's obvious they need to get into digital, but I would suggest they get into the right circles, whether it's colleagues that are really digital or study groups or something, because like we talked about, super fast moving, super fast moving. And I think anyone who's just graduating now needs to not catch up, but stay with this and not fall behind. Uh, the reason why I say that is it's not the same as a dentist who may be retiring in five years. If you're retiring in five years, maybe you don't care. But if you're just starting your career now, you need to be on the cutting edge. You and can't I, start analog. No, shit, no. I would suggest any dentist, graduate or, or undergrad who's watching this, your first job needs to have a scanner and a, ideally a printer and a good, so, and a good principal to tutor, mentor you, etc. You can't start analog, no way. Not mm. these days. Yeah. Not these so days. So don't go to analog offices. Don't really <laughs> That's so sad. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna offend all the dentists, man, that are listening. But let's go to the analog offices, the guys who are doing their thing. I think realistically, if you're gonna retire in five years, maybe you don't care. Who cares? If you're not and you're in the game for at least ten to fifteen years, you need to buy a scanner and honestly a printer tomorrow. You're falling behind, like terribly falling behind. And I know people get sick of this advice, but like you just have to digitize. There's no way around it. Like we're talking about AI and, and cloud and printing and new biomaterials and nano and this and that. And the the scanner is like the gatekeeper. If you don't scan, you don't get access to any of this. Yeah, it's like internet, right? It's like, it's, it's like that today. <laughs> Very true. You need to get in the door, man. Even if you don't want to go all the way, you need to get in the door. Even if you don't believe in it. Like the dentistry is changing. It's totally changing. And if you're going to stay in the analog sphere, you're going to be exactly like the dentists that still do silver fillings now. Do you respect these guys? That's a very good analogy. You know? Do you respect these guys that are doing mercury all, yeah. fillings now? Wow. Everyone laughs at them. Exactly. 
So you need to keep up to date. And the second thing is you really need to consider upskilling in the sense that your patients, I'm not going to say deserve better. You, everyone does good work. I'm not going to lecture dentists as if I'm the best. But there are workflows now that exist and the technology is not out of, there's not crazy money anymore. How much is a sprint race system? 15, 16? $15,000. $15, guys. Like people buy more on food a year, you mm -hmm. know, and eating out. Restaurants are like three, 400 bucks a piece. And there's technology now that will completely radicalize how you change, how you, how you perform dentistry and how you provide care for your patients. You think about it, forget the restorations if you don't believe in that. What about the splints that work? You can do that in 24 hours in the same day. Surgical guides, patient comes in, they want an implant, you can scan them, CBCT, make a guide, same day you can do the surgery. And a printer in your office is a complete manufacturing facility. It's not like a mill that only does ceramics and composite. This thing does everything. Mm -hmm. Models, surgical guides, splints, restorations, etc. Aligners one day, that will be in the horizon. And so really the advice for anyone out there, you need to digitize and now more importantly than ever is keep up to date. Keep up to date with the changes, go to these conferences, these conventions. It's fast moving. It's a fast moving industry. Pretty cool, Ahmed. Thank you for coming to My the pleasure. podcast in Los Angeles for us. My absolute pleasure. Appreciate it. Thank you, Ahmed. Thank you.